when I first moved to the U.S., I was 17 years old. And uh, before that, when I first started learning English, I was about 14, 15. And in this video, I want to share my story with you and tell you what I did exactly and how I learned English to a native speaker level. When I seriously started learning, my goal was to be 100% ready before my move, right? Uh, I was really about to move to an English speaking country, right? From Russia, where, you know, English is not the first language, obviously. So uh, my goal, as I said, was to be 100% ready. I did not want my poor English to limit any opportunities or I didn't want to uh, struggle, you know, with school because I couldn't understand something or I, you know, I wanted to have friends and have a social life and, and just have fun. I wanted to be on the same level as everybody else. I didn't want to catch up. I wanted to just be there and focus on the things that I wanted to do. And I was terrified uh, of the possibility of moving here and, and struggling to communicate and struggling to understand and struggling to express myself. And, uh, you know, I was terrified of not living my life to the fullest here in Los Angeles and, you know, kind of uh, throwing my dream away. So that fear was what moved me to actually go outside of the norm and try some unconventional at the time uh, methods of learning English. So uh, let's kind of break it down and uh, let me tell you exactly what I did. So at first I started learning English with all the traditional methods that were available to me at the time. And uh, it was fine. It was fine for some time. For some time it worked. I was fortunate enough to be able to go to like a school, like an ESL school. And because of my age, let me remind you, I was 14. And uh, usually, you know, at that specific ESL school, in my hometown um 14 you've been learning already i was kind of late right so uh, because i was 14 i was a true beginner right they put me in an intermediate class only because of my age because can you imagine it's kind of awkward i'm 14 i'm sitting in, in, in the classroom with like seven or eight year olds that's kind of stupid so i understand uh, it was a very stressful environment for me. I, everybody could speak already and stuff like that, and I was just shocked. I had no idea, and uh, I was embarrassed. And my goal was to just, you know, catch up to everybody else in the class so that um, I don't feel like an idiot. That's basically what it was. And I worked really hard to do that. You know, I worked really hard in class. And uh, when that year ended, I barely passed my final speaking exam thing from the second try actually too it was just rough it was rough but it kept me going because uh advice number one i guess uh comes out of that set a very specific goal set your own selfish but specific goal something that makes you excited something that puts a smile on your face it is very important because when everything else gets hard around you which it will you can still look in and, and, and kind of find that sense of purpose and, and just keep going. And also with, you know, having this specific goal for me, I want to speak English like a native speaker, like an American, right? Having that clarity of my goal helped me realize something very important that changed my English journey forever. And what I realized was out of everything that's available to me in terms of resources, teachers, classes, whatever the case may be, no one can give me what I need, unfortunately, right? I realized that very, very quickly after I set my specific goal and I actually said it out loud and admitted it to myself, right? So um, now I was, you know, facing a, a problem. If no one can help me, I have to figure it out on my own. And that's when I really started thinking outside of the box. So the first thing I was thinking about is, you know, I need to make it very natural, right? If when we think of a native speaker, it's it's natural for them, obviously, for, you know, many reasons. But I need to make it natural. I need to get used to it. Every time I hear it, I need to treat it, you know, I need to stop making a big deal out of it. When I hear it, I, I don't need, you know, like, like a dog, my ears perk up and I, you know, sit up and I have to pay attention. That needs to stop. You know, it needs to be natural and regular. Like every time I hear English is just regular. You know, I, I'm relaxed, I can hear it and I can understand it. And then I can say something back. I basically needed my brain to start treating English just like a native language. And um, 
let me tell you what it took. And the first thing I thought was, when I feel happy, I feel relaxed, right? When we're smiling and laughing, we are more open to change. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, maybe I can take all the things that make me happy, which, you know, is my hobbies and things I do in my free time to entertain myself. Maybe I can take that and start doing it in English so that, you know, I am emotionally open because I'm having a good time and I'm happy and I'm laughing and I'm smiling and also English is coming in and that way I can trick my brain into kind of uh, receiving it in, in a different way, in a more comfortable way. What I also did, I switched all of my devices to English, uh, you know, phone, computer, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, but yeah, all the websites and everything, everything that I used online or, you know, on my phone or computer was in English. And uh, it was very stressful when I needed to find specific settings and I couldn't find them and I really had to figure it out. And uh, it, it, this is a great way to do it too. And all of that was really hard at first, but I needed to get used to it because my goal was to make it natural and, and be completely relaxed. Like I told you, I didn't want English to be a big deal. I wanted it to be very regular and very normal and I needed my brain to treat it as such. And um, you know, after some time, it really happened for me. It really got that way. By creating this fake artificial English speaking environment around me, I was able to actually get it done. And that comfortability is a very important step. You have no idea. Everything else comes from that place. It encourages you to learn more and, and you know, put yourself out there and practice and, and just do things that are good for your English. And you do them without any problems because it's it's comfortable. It feels it feels like home, right? From that place, I quickly realized that memorizing stuff and learning stuff just to learn it does not work at all. So I started being more active with it which means I started applying or trying to apply everything I learned to my life as if I was already in an English speaking country, talking through different situations in my head or you know, at home when I was alone. And my thought process was if I woke up tomorrow and, and things were opposite, right? And uh, it was opposite world. And magically I woke up in an English speaking environment and all of my friends and all of my family, my entire life, all of a sudden just, started being in English, right? What would I talk about? What would I do? What words would I need? What grammar would I use every day? Analyzing your actual needs in terms of conversations. What do you talk about every day? What are you good at? What do all your friends come to you for advice for, right? You, you have to think about that. That is what's gonna guide you in terms of what you need to learn next. And once you figure that out, start being more active with it. There is a three point system that comes into play. The first step is learning it, actually, you know, trying to figure out what this grammar is or what this word means, right? Second step is trying it. So if you have like a book that you learn with, you know, do all the exercises, connect the dots, fill the gaps, you know, whatever the case may be, you, you just try it, right? And the third step is, you know, you, you generate language, you, you write or you speak your own thoughts and ideas using this grammar or this word, whatever it is that you're learning. So just remember, three point system, learn, try, do it yourself. And if you filter everything you learn through those three steps, that's, that's how you actually learn and how it stays. I also spend a lot of time on the internet. I did, I really did. Facebook, you know, uh, Twitter, YouTube, uh, different blogs and stuff like that. You know, just, just groups, pages and fan groups of, of things that I, also enjoyed. See, I wasn't just looking for people to practice English. What is what is that? I was looking for people that I could actually, you know, talk to about some things that I am passionate about. I was looking for people to discuss something with, not practice English. That's weird. I did everything I could online to to, you know, be heard and to be able to speak and use certain things that I was learning. Also, it may sound weird, but I know you do it, so that's okay. Um, I talked to myself a lot too, you know, in my free time when I was alone and nobody was watching me, you know, because <laughs> uh, it is a little weird. But, you know, when you talk to yourself in English, it, it's, it's kind of like you're rehearsing for a real conversation. It's cool. It takes some, some of the pressure off. You, you know, you can't really be prepared for a real life conversation because it could go a million different ways. But, you know, th just the action of it, you could, you could definitely prepare for just the action of communicating with someone, which, you know, talking to yourself does for you. I also studied the culture 
you know, obviously I knew where I was going and, uh, you know, I made sure I watched a lot of YouTube videos or, you know, uh, TV, movies. I was watching and analyzing people and how they communicated and what they talked about, what kind of references they made, idioms they use, phrasal verbs, just everything. I was really focused on all of those things and uh, I was doing my research and trying to practice the same way. And yeah, as a result, I got off that plane in October of 2013 and I was ready. I was ready. And uh, I'm making this video, or I made this video, that I guess this video is over, uh, because I want to tell you now it's your turn. It's up to you now. So uh, go ahead, you know, take everything that I told you and try it. It worked for me and it will definitely work for you. I have no talent for languages at all. And it's just really cool. To, to be at this stage now kind of with all of it behind me and to be able to say that I am the product of my own system that I used to teach other people so you know that's how I know it works because I, I got myself here and I, you know we, we can do the same but yeah this is it I just wanted to have this conversation with you and share my story and hopefully you found something that inspired you or found some actionable steps that you can take starting today thank you so much for your support and uh if you like this video you know make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel do not miss anything i put out because i try to give as much value as i can and help you guys in the way that no one could help me and if this is your first time joining us welcome to english with venya a place where we level up and never look back see you in the next one